Hi, my name is Abby Rincon. I'm an instructor at City College of San Francisco. And I'm Tim Berthold, also an instructor at City College of San Francisco. And we want to talk to you about the challenge of giving and receiving constructive or critical feedback, uh, both in the classroom and on the job. Uh, your ability to receive constructive feedback from your teachers or trainers, from your coworkers and your supervisors, is a core professional skill that sometimes defines your success in the field. Yes, exactly. And as you've probably noticed by now, this, this class that you're in, this training, is very different from other classes that you've been in. You're not just sitting down listening to a lecture and leaving. You're actually learning by doing. And so there's a lot of interaction in the classroom. There's a lot of participation, a lot of role playing, a lot of dialogue. So part of this is, as instructors, we want to help you to learn how to keep improving yourself. And so our job is to give you that critical feedback and help you learn also not only how you can grow from that, but how you can give that critical feedback to your colleagues who are in training with you and then as you go forward into the professional field. This is one of the hardest skills to learn. Sometimes it's because it hurts our feelings if we're on the receiving end of it, but we always have to remember when an instructor is giving you this feedback, it's because our, your instructors believe in you and want you to succeed and want you to raise up to that higher standard. So as instructors, we're always figuring out ways that we can do this in a way that's um, caring and shows to you all that we trust, we trust you. And the feedback we give, when it may, may be seen as negative, is actually for us to say, listen, we believe in you and we want you to do better. So that's something that we hope people will keep in mind as we go forward in the training in the training with you and we expect you to give us that feedback as well as your instructors when things maybe could be improved upon. So when we hear that feedback we don't want to come from an ego place but rather one of thank you for that feedback that's really a gift for me to hear and that's the, the intent it has for us as instructors is this is a gift for you all. Otherwise by the, that's why out there in the community agencies love our graduates because they have been in action and learning by doing this whole time and improving because they're given this feedback. So keep that in mind. This is, this is for your own good. But again, we really appreciate the feedback when it may not be working as well. The other thing that we like to do, I think, when we're giving feedback is to um, sandwich the constructive part in between some praise. So for example, if students are doing a role play in class, mm -hmm. Um, there's always something that the person playing the CHW did well, something that they said, something about their tone of voice or mm -hmm. their body language that we want to point out uh, um, as a positive, as something that they want to do more of in the future. So point that out at the same time that you're saying um, something more constructive about, you know, something that, this, that the student did or said that you don't think would be the strongest or best way to work with a client. What we know is comments like, oh, that was terrible. That doesn't work. Yes. Or that was really good. That doesn't really work. Constructive and critical feedback means giving specific feedback. What I liked about what you did was your eye contact. What I like about what you did was that you repeated back what the client was saying. What I think could be improved upon is you need to have more eye contact. What I think would have helped you was if you had stopped writing so many notes and looking down. That's called critical constructive feedback. And you'll learn more about this in your classrooms. And we encourage you to embrace this concept. And we'll try to do the same.